welcome to Home and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related, but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Hi, everyone. Today's guest is a dear, dear friend of mine. We met at university and have remained friends ever since. We've seen each other grow, change jobs, career paths, and try new things out. His name is Jonathan Agoma. And before I tell you a little bit more about him, I want to give Jonathan a huge shout out and thank you. When the idea of this podcast first came up, I asked if he could do a practice round with me so I could get comfortable before I start interviewing more people and he kindly accepted, even though it was pretty short moments notice and he was pretty nervous. This is the first recording we did, and you might notice that the format towards the end is slightly different from the previous episodes. Spoiler alert, we pulled an affirmation card instead of the rapid fire cues. There is still so much value in our conversation, and I think many will be able to resonate with Jonathan's journey. One thing I've learned this year, if you're listening from a far future, I'm referring to the year 2020, is to ask for help to lean on each other and vice versa. This year has been very intense for many individually and on a collective level. As someone who grew up being praised for their independence, asking and receiving help was a hard lesson to learn. I was always a helper, yet I didn't know how to ask, let alone receive help. But the beauty is, it's never too late to start. And when you're around the right people, you'll be able to get the support you need. So I wanted to wrap this year up with this beautiful passage from Tokopa Turner's book, Belonging, Remembering Ourselves Home. Where you long for the friend who calls only to find out if you're well, be that caller for another. Where you long for eloquent prayers to be made of everyday things, let your own clumsy words bless your meals out loud. Where you wish for ritual under the moon's Be the one who holds the heartbeat of gathering. Where you aid to be recognized, allow yourself to be seen. Where you long to be known, sit next to someone and listen for the insight into what they love. Where you wish you felt necessary, give those gifts away. I hope this passage resonated with you as much as it did with me. So let's dive into the episode. Who is Jonathan? Jonathan is a creative designer and art director who specializes in designing interactive experiences, products, and brand development initiatives. He spent his career leapfrogging across Canada, working as a creative for various industries from advertising agencies to broadcast TV to bricks and motor retail design. From working on beer and cheese to cars and banks and everything in between, Jonathan has prided himself on diversity and curiosity above all else. Never choosing to stay in one spot, in 2019, he chose to leave the life of 9 to 5 to begin exploring his own personal and professional ventures. In today's episode, Jonathan shares how he fell into design even though he had another career in mind, how things were great on paper but not aligned to what mattered to him, how burnout made him reevaluate everything he was doing, the importance of taking a step back, the lessons he learned from being a digital nomad, how adopting a curious mindset has helped him create a life around what he values the most. Let's get started. Um, I wanted to share a bit of how I met you, Jonathan. It was, I think, almost 2007, 13 years ago that I met you. Probably. Uh, at university, yeah, I, remember, I remember the moment. You might remember it better than me. I do remember. It was a, a color and two D class, and I remember because you told me, "Hi, I'm Jonathan. I'm Filipino. I think something like that." 
And I'm like, you're the first Filipino I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you were so shocked. And I'm like, why, why is he shocked? You're like, there's so many of us. Yeah. <laughs> Not knowing that I just moved from Peru to yeah. Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You were, you were actually the first Peruvian I knew, I think, perhaps, that I knew at the time, that I realized. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. There's more of us now, isn't there? <laughs> no, for sure. And I realized I, I knew a ton of Peruvians before. I just never asked that they were Peruvian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my first impression of you, but you've always been so open and curious and excited about life in general. So, I mean, there's so much I want to start with, but tell me a little bit about your career path. Sure. Um, so I guess to like kind of start things off, when I first kind of went into design and the whole design industry, I didn't even know this was a profession. Like a lot of people, when they went into university, they, they knew they wanted to be a designer. They knew they wanted to be creative, but I kind of just like fell into it. I was originally took all my courses to be a nurse. Actually, I, I took sciences and everything. Um, but like in secret, I guess I, I at like night school and summer school, I took all these extra credits so then I could take co-op because I wanted to try a job out. And the co-op I took was a junior intern designer at this uh, small company by the lake. And that's my first exposure to being a designer outside, you know, art class and like communications technology. And then I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Um, and I guess what really motivated me into getting applying for design school and not applying for any other science courses or, or sorry, nursing schools or anything like that was I, I couldn't help but feel like I would get bored in any company I would work at or any industry I'd work at. But after working as an intern designer, I realized as a creative, you get to work with different people and you get to like experience different kinds of industries. And I thought, hey, this is like a really cool way to avoid staying in one <laughs> company. Back then, I didn't realize that would be like the roadmap to how I treated a lot of my career. But that's kind of what I did going into design. So that's kind of how I fell into it. And then over the years, I moved, like, like you mentioned, uh, from like ad agencies to like broadcast television, um, more of the digital side of broadcast television. And I kind of just did a thing where every time I learned enough or I got bored, I kind of threw a wrench in my life and quit my job and moved to different places. One of the most notable things I did was I, I quit a really good job all of a sudden and I made the excuse that I was going to drive across the country uh, and visit national parks. So I kept on saying that to my colleagues and they kept on saying, all right, when are you going to quit? And I eventually picked a day and I was like, I have to do this. So I drove across the country, moved to the West Coast and started working as a freelance remote designer there. So um, that's, that was one of those bigger moments in my life where I said, hey, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to push myself and see where it goes. And it honestly influenced so much of where I am in my career now. It exposed me to remote life or, or, or like the digital nomad and also made me realize that you could really push this idea of working for a lot of different people in a lot of different places. And then after that, I decided to come back to Toronto um, after the stint in the West Coast and I ended up working for a bricks and mortar retail design company. Um, where after several years, I decided to kind of go on my own, finally, for sure. And I'm here where I am today, really working for myself, working with a couple partners on different things and trying out, loud, out a lot of new ideas that I'd never had the opportunity to fully commit to before. So oh my gosh. That's kind of like, me in a nutshell. <laughs> in a nutshell. I, one thing that really stood up to me when you were telling me that you plan to become a nurse and you took those classes in secret? Why, <laughs> how so? Uh, like the design classes? Um, honestly, Wait, so the nurse classes that you were taking, were those in secret or was it design ones? It was, uh, well, it wasn't quite in secret, but I was doing um, all those nursing courses during nights and like night school and university so I could do co-op and art classes on my normal time, right? So. I, I did it obviously because I come from a family of healthcare professionals. I really thought that's what I was supposed to do. 
And then I didn't, <laughs> to the surprise of a lot of people who, who realized I never actually applied to any nursing schools or anything like that. So. Oh, wow. So it was just taking one of the extra classes that made you kind of fall in love with design? Yeah, I would say um, it was obviously like the, there was this one course, it was called Communications Technology. A lot of people, at least in our curriculum, know about it. Um, what really pushed me into creating something was now that I'm thinking of it, um, I, I worked, it sounds super nerdy, but I think it's cool now, but I worked for like arguably what the AV club would be in, in high school where we made like the student television shows. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So it was like back in the day when YouTube didn't really quite exist in the same way it did now. And me and my, my friends at the time just made a bunch of videos. It was for the class. And then we presented them to the school and stuff like that. And it was just this like monthly um, kind of TV broadcast that would broadcast around the school. And that made me start to realize that being creative could one, be really fun and also possibly be a job. So that, that pushed me into taking the internship, which was like mm -hmm. a co-op program. And then, yeah, and then luckily enough for that, it also taught me that you can get paid for doing this, whatever this is, right? Yeah, having fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that that really propelled me to think, hey, I can maybe do this. Maybe I should try this. And obviously my family didn't necessarily approve at first, but it motivated me to like get every little success I could get to prove that, hey, maybe maybe I can make this into a career. So. Oh, I know that. I know that thought. It's something about having to prove your parents. It's I think it's a really good drive at mm -hmm. the beginning as long as you're aligned to what you're trying to prove. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a very and good one. You also mentioned how, um, you know, you were in a very, very good job and you decided to quit to, yeah. you know, to become a digital nomad. So yeah. what made the job great and what made you, hey, say like, I'm done with this, I wanna try something else. Sure. Um, so one, the job was great because the people were super nice. Coming from a lot of advertising backgrounds before, this one was slightly different. It wasn't quite advertising in the same sense. So it didn't have that same kind of, I guess, pressure that other jobs had in, in earlier in my career. So that's really what made it great. Everyone was really understanding. I learned a lot. Um, everything from like on paper, it makes sense, really good benefits long-term employment, things that designers often strive for early in their career. Um, that to me, what, what motivated me to get out of that was just the work didn't necessarily inspire me in the same way. Um, there were things I knew I could do. And I think the biggest thing, and it's not to sound like um, that, you know, the, the job wouldn't have been good for me is that uh, I was just curious if I could do something else. And I think the little drive inside me was, some of the best things in life happened when I decided to just say, you know, F it, let's try something different. And mm -hmm. I, I was like, well, let's just try something different. So it was a lot of naivety and not really forward planning. And that kind of felt really interesting at the time. So yeah. That propelled me to, to, to learn doing it. Like a, yeah. <laughs> so how long were you a digital nomad for? Sure. Um, at that moment, um, I qu when I quit, I spent around two months just bumming around national parks across Canada with a couple friends. Um, and then I spent just under a year working for multiple companies on the West Coast. So mm -hmm. I would spend three months at one time place or I would work at a couple both remotely. And this was at a time where I didn't think that was necessarily possible that companies would be uh, cool with me not staying for a prolonged amount of periods, as well as other companies would be okay with me just coming in for a day or working on a couple projects and saying, yeah, you can do whatever else with your time. Um, so I did that for about a year and then I, I would move back into full time where the thought of being that again was always like just trickling in the back of my head. So mm -hmm. I kept all the I kept all the uh, the contacts, I kept talking to them like, yeah, someday I'll move back into that industry. and. That was probably the best thing I did was when I finally decided to go back into being this digital nomad again, they're all like, okay, cool. We, uh, you know, finally, or we have worked for you or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, That's those are four different people of contacts. It also speaks to, you know, the relationships you form, right? Even though it's not long-term or, you know, it's not people you're going to be working with forever, it's good to just be nice to each other and, like, put your heart and soul in what you do so that if you do connect with them eventually, they are like, hey, open arms. And it, it feels validating, too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think I would describe it like when you have those really good friends or these good relationships where you don't see each other for a long time, but when you start, when you hang out again, it's like, hey, it just feels just like normal. And I mm-hmm. think it's just because you, you spent the work creating a good relationship or a good repertoire that when they're, when you guys are both ready to like hang out or work together in this case, it makes it more comfortable. Right. In a way, by taking the risk of becoming a digital nomad, you got more connections that are sustaining you now that you have your own business, your own company. Yeah, that was the that was the surprising part. Um, I guess that kind of, that's kind of what propelled me into going back into this life was while I was working full time, I always felt that I, I planted seeds years and mm-hmm. years ago in these relationships and that, you know, maybe there weren't opportunities then, but what pushed me to finally say now's the time to do it was that you know, there are opportunities now. There are opportunities both personally and professionally to try something new. And I'm glad I decided to leave it at that point because those seeds finally bared fruit, right? They finally grew into something where perhaps it might not have worked well, both professionally and personally. It might not have been good timing if I did it, you know, a year before that or two years before that. So mm-hmm. timing, timing really made sense there. Yeah, especially now that everything is digital. It's kind of like, hey, pretty lucky. And also, I mean, good planning and, you know, letting things fall into place. Yes, yeah, it was, uh, I, I wouldn't say it, it, uh, it was something that I wasn't keeping, like, uh, a big plan. Like, you know me, I, I always, like, have these, like, weird master plans. And I try to get mm-hmm. as good as possible. And that was what was really important. Um, I sometimes talk about life as if like you can just do things vicariously and throw a wrench in your life. Oops, I'm sorry. Throw a wrench in your life. But um, in the end of the day, planning does help. Being hyper aware of how, where certain opportunities might come is, is super important. So mm-hmm. I always wrote everything down. I always, um, not to say journaled, but I documented my kind of stages towards where I wanted to be. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I really admire about you because you know me for a while. Sometimes when I tell you about my plans and you're like, how did you get there? I'm like, I kind of just winged it. Yeah. That <laughs> feel so really good. I think, um, I think that like, I think a lot of people can just do that. Uh, for me, I needed that focus because mm-hmm. maybe in the back of my head, I had to justify um, what I was doing, right? I, it had to, I still was proving that this was valid where um, it takes someone to also just let things happen as it goes. So it's just different approaches. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. I admire that you're just like, you can be lazy <laughs> fair at about things and it's just like awesome because you just get all this like good work and good people around you. And I think that's an energy you're just putting out. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I also wanted to ask, um, I know this subject is common, um, amongst a lot of people. Um, I burnt out so many times throughout my career and just, I know it's something that's also happened to you. Do you want to talk a little bit more about it? Like when was the first time you realized you were burnt out? Sure. So for me, there was so much what you said, many moments where I felt burnt out, but I I need to put a caveat to it. At the time, I thought I was burnt out. So there are these moments where I'm I'm grinding, I'm putting a lot of hours in. A lot of times in creative industries, you can put tons of hours, tons of unreasonable, um, often unpaid, uh, unvalidated hours, you know, working till midnight and so forth. And there was, there's these moments, and I remember one specifically where Honestly, you're grinding, you're working to midnight, you're working, trying to make things better or, you know, push for a deadline or what have you. And I was just driving. I think I was like on a date uh, with my girlfriend and we were just driving. And all of a sudden I just felt like crap. I just got really overwhelmed with 
everything and kind of all hit at once. And I just was so angry and so bitter. And I'll just, it was like a breakdown. And my girlfriend was like, what the heck is going on? Like we, we were having a normal day and it was just, I realized there was just so much pressure I was putting on myself for both in, external, internal. And that was the, one of the first moments that I thought was burnout um, or that I was getting to being burnt out. Um, but over the years, the, these occurrences obviously kept happening in different jobs and different careers and so forth. And I started to understand that that was just uh, like an early symptom of what now I define as burnout. So at one point in my, later in my career, obviously the same thing happened and it was way worse. But at that time, I, I thought it was burnout. But what I realized was truly burnout was happened a year later, a year after that, where at some point I felt that, you know, I didn't even want to be angry anymore. I didn't even want to be frustrated or I didn't even want to try. And at that point I realized that's truly what I define as burnout where I'm not even, I don't even have the energy to be frustrated or be, you know, um, emotionally involved into, into my work, what have you. I didn't want to be creative anymore. And that is what I, recognized as the worst place to be the times before where I was getting really frustrated and angry it meant I still cared it meant I still cared about the work about something or what have you and often I defined that as what burnout was but this later point in my life when I realized that you know all the coals ran cold there's no more energy and it was just so hard to like reignite uh, my creative energy or my desire to do something that was the moment I really defined as what true burnout was. And that was a hard time in my life where I recognized I can't just take a vacation. I can't just take a break or ask for less work. I have to fundamentally change something um, mm -hmm. to feel better. Um, so often when I think about burnout, the biggest moments in my head that have the impacts were when I got really frustrated and angry. But I know that burnout, like those, if those moments aren't addressed, true burnout happens where you really do feel apathetic about being creative and that's mm -hmm. no place you want to be. So, so yeah, that was my experience. During, during yeah. the time that you thought it was burnout, what were you frustrated and angry about? Um, for me, it was heavily about the amount of, uh, how can I say it? Perhaps it was uh, at some t at some points they were because things felt unfair, things felt uh, not productive, things were really just going against what I valued as being a creator. Um, really, what led to all those like symptoms of burnout or like I like to think about them was just when you feel like you're being creatively wrung out, where you're just using up all you know all your ideas are just being wrung out all your energy is just being used to propel something it doesn't have to be negative it's just you're just putting so much effort into things um so that's really kind of what attributed to that and obviously it's not just to say work contributes to that your own health contributes to that your, your mm -hmm. personal you know things that happen in your personal life i felt during that time because there was so much pressure i was putting myself to to get to my goals or what have you and not feeling like I was getting those results, um, it did have cascading effects to other parts of my life that arguably didn't help, you know, uh, with the whole situation either, right? So mm -hmm. I feel like obviously work is an easy thing to blame, and it definitely was a thing, but it, it was my inability to set my own my own boundaries. It was my inability to say like, you know, this is enough, this is good enough, and to accept wins and so forth. I think mm -hmm. this constant drive to to work or to make to get the value that I thought I needed um, really led to that. So that's kind of how I felt during that time. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> I know it's not yeah. the easiest to talk about <laughs> kind yeah, of the, sure. the tougher times. Yeah, for sure. Um, it's obviously something that there were points in my life I addressed. Um, I feel like I'm in an obviously better place now. Uh, one thing, a piece of advice I got before that was always in the back of my head whenever these, these big events happened where I was feeling so crappy or bummed out or, um, was someone once told me at the beginning of my career, she said, you like, you seem to like to work and you seem to work really hard. And she's like, just know that 
it's it's a long play. Uh, you know, don't burn out before it's over. The whole idea is just trying to get to the end and not just, you know, get halfway. And on the back of my head, I was like, I have no idea what that means because I yeah. was just out of school. I said, I'm ready to prove myself. But, uh, you know, obviously getting to that point where I said, you know, all the frustration is gone and there's no more passion and energy. I realized that's what she meant. Getting to that point, it's so hard to restart. It's a vacation doesn't help it. You really have to find what inspired you to be creative again. So I, I always tell that to my designers that, you know, don't burn out and understand what burnout means. It's not getting frustrated. It's realizing you don't want to do this job anymore. Right. I think there's also a lot about alignment because I realize when I'm working on projects I care about and excited about and the people that I'm surrounded by are also going towards the same goal. I don't, I can put in the hours. I don't get us frustrated, but when it's, I'm working for a client that's, they might be a little bit unreasonable or, you know, just too demanding or something like that. It doesn't even feel good to do that work and less alone to put more hours on it, especially when they want something from one day to another. And yeah. I, I think I had a lot of that energy where my boundaries weren't good. <laughs> and so they kept taking, I think people can tell when they, when they know, oh, you're a hard worker or you don't mind working. So they, I think yeah. unless you put a boundary, they're going to try taking, you know, maybe because they don't know. They're like, hey, because she's always given, yes. why not? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it also kind of comes down to people having like a, I had it, I guess I could say, like a hero complex. Like you want to be the person who, who did yes. it. You want to be the person who brought that great idea to the table and pushed it through and whatever. And um, people, people may not know that, people I don't think are trying to take advantage of you, but when you come mm -hmm. off as the person who will save the day or who has the right ideas or is that person to go to, you, you have this hero complex that doesn't necessarily make the whole team better, right? So I think when you're saying about alignment, really good teams, and I've been on so many of them where, and I'm thankful, are those who, 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 who like a team got each other. They know when you're getting tired, they know when you need a break, or they'll just sit with you while you, while you grind through. And that level alignment is honestly like the magic hour. That's when everything is just feels good and you have this boundless amount of energy and like mm -hmm. spirit to finish something or get so something to the point you want it to be. Yeah, that's beautiful. I think having the team definitely helps. And I guess now, how do you, do you find yourself getting close to burnout or how do you check in with yourself to avoid that from happening again? Or what changed, I guess? Maybe that's the, <laughs> that's the main question. What changed between back then and now? Sure. Um, I think a lot of things that changed when, was when I realized that I was as much in control of my, my burnout or me burning out. Mm -hmm. Sorry, rather, I didn't realize how much in control I was in that situation. It's very easy to play the victim and say, oh, you know, all this work is coming in, people are being unfair without really understanding how to, like we said, set your boundaries, right? So right now I'm, I'm way better at one, setting my boundaries, creating expectations. Um, obviously working remote really helps with that. The fact that you're physically not there stops, you know, drive by people from saying like, hey, can I have this or what have you. Drive by people, I love it. That's, that's basically what it feels like some days. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, you know, having this like remote, life re really helped and I, I learned to one embrace the ambiguity that comes with it but at the same time know, know uh, what was positive and how to use that. Uh, the, the other thing that I felt really helps me acknowledge what burnout looks like and what you know eventual burnout will feel like because I'm sure I'm going to have it throughout my life and the point is just to alleviate it or stop it early is uh, just recognizing that I was kind of just like what I'm like when I'm mad or frustrated or, or stressed and what that looks like to other people. And I think only when you can remove yourself from a situation and realize that you're like, oh, wow, I, I am this maybe not good version of myself or I'm not as passionate or as creative as I used to be. Being able to like have time to step away from all the kind of environments I used to be in made me realize that, oh, that's not quite who I want to be. I like aspects about it, but you know, maybe I can adjust. And I was not able to do that before when I, 
I would just constantly grind, right? Constantly try to, to, to do something or be creative or prove something to myself. So mm -hmm. a distance from myself really helped. I guess my old right. self really helped. Um, yeah. But now I, I don't feel like I get as much burnout. I mean, now's a weird time because of the <laughs> lockdowns and the global pandemic. But uh, so, but I, I'm just way better. I feel like I'm, I'm way happier now. Um, obviously, there's things that have been lost in the, in the mix of not being in those really intense environments. There's things I miss about it. But right mm -hmm. now, I'm just trying to figure out what's the, what's the balance, which I have a hard time figuring out balance. <laughs> what do you miss about, I guess, those interactions? Um, I miss one, like you said, the alignment, being on teams who are just so, who care so much and put so much effort into what they believe in. And that's arguably like kind of walking that thin line between, you know, burning out and being like in a really good, healthy environment. Uh, mm -hmm. So I miss the team members. Um, and I, I kind of missed uh, the the pushing to the edge. Um, I've talked to different people about what it means to push the edge. And I miss kind of flirting with the edge, flirting with the, the idea of like, this is, this is the best or hardest I've worked or the best X I could do. And that feels really good, right? So I think the, the importance is not to be scared of burning out, not to be scared that, you know, going back into like that environment will make you something else. Um, I think that it's kind of like playing on knowing your limits and knowing that it's really mm -hmm. fun to like climb that mountain, walk that edge and feel like, oh, this is cool. This is me at my like creative max, right? And mm -hmm. that's what I kind of miss because I'm still that kind of person. Who, who, you know, I this is like a perfect segment because I <laughs> I've noticed that lately you have this outdoorsy adventure and you know i see you exploring and hiking and you know climbing that mountain it's kind of like you brought that design drive into i guess in a different form yeah i think so it's weird the outdoors is it's like a thing i can talk to you forever about um but yeah there's a lot of really exciting similarities between you know working really hard to to you know, work on your craft and meet a deadline or whatever. At the same time, there's a lot of, it, there's a lot of parallels between pushing yourself to the limit and trying to, you know, climb that mountain, finish that hike or do whatever. So there's a lot of energy I was, I'm able to put into that, uh, which does feel good. Uh, and it's honestly a help boundless and other things in my life. I think um, that that kind of correlation is something that will always be something I strive to. It's just like, how far can I push something you know, how far to the edge can I go? Um, but what really helped is knowing, you know, when you get to the edge, you just have to know, you know, not to fall off, right? And burnout is, is can be feel very much like that. You're pushing, you're trying to be progressive, you're trying to be the best you can be. But if you don't have the wherewithal to understand that, hey, I'm at my limit at this point in time, you can really like kind of fall right off. So. Right. Right, because there's also that energy that comes from like the inspiration of wanting to do it, but then there's also like you can't push anymore because then it's good. you're gonna fall off the ledge, yeah, <laughs> literally right. and you yeah. know yeah, energetically. There's both like there's like the physical like real conversation about like pushing to a physical edge, and there's also just like this mental edge that we all have, uh, and I, I think of it like how working out, you know, it doesn't mean you can you'll never get to these like goals. It just means maybe not today. Maybe you need to like take a step back, regroup, and then figure it out and go about it again. Where yeah, And that's okay. Yeah, and that's and okay, okay, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Oh, wow. It makes me want to go climb a mountain. I don't know if I can do it like you do. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but it's like small. super inspiring, <laughs> especially with your, I guess, would you say that your latest passions are the outdoors experience or it's something you've always had within you? It, it was definitely something that was always within me. Um, the outdoors always felt like a, a really good escape. I, I made every opportunity I could when I was working full time. Uh, mm -hmm. Working remote really helped with that aspect that I could be on a on a mountain one day and then I can go back and, and work another day. Um, and my clients are all, 
arguably really chill about it. <laughs> one time I was introduced to a new client from a previous one. And he said, just to let you know, Jonathan isn't always around because <laughs> sometimes he's like in the woods. And I was like, oh, is that a problem? He's like, no, it's fine. I just want people to know that you sometimes just go into the woods. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people are so chill and cool about it. And they understand to work with my rhythm where in the past I never thought that was possible to like. Right, because you've already set the expectations up front now. So you yeah. get to do those things, not, you know, only on vacation. Like you said, it's nice to sneak those moments that, you know, that you enjoy. Like you enjoy yeah. both things. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. So um, I, I always enjoyed working, uh, being in the outdoors. It always felt, it always felt super good because when you're in the outdoors, you're either doing something to arguably like survive whether it's like creating a fire or fishing or you're doing it to have fun which is just like hanging out eating or even um like just laying down doing nothing like there, there's no pressures it's just oh, yeah. really at its most basic form what you need right so that's why i like I it, it. Such an i story. love it yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um so you were in a leadership mentorship position in mm -hmm. an agency before you started your own company Tell me a little bit about that time. Yeah, for sure. Um, it was definitely like the, a, a new frontier for me. Um, I've worked with, you know, juniors in the past. I, I worked in art director roles, but this one, I, I applied as an art director knowing I was going to lead a small team, and it slowly became I, being the, the creative lead and director of design at that company. Um, that was a transition that was really new for me because from, from mentoring, it became being kind of accountable for people. So that, that was the biggest transition for me where I kind of had to embody and learn and think about everything that I looked up to in really great leaders and really great creative directors and so forth. And I tried to apply it. Um, I don't know if I did the best job. I tried really hard. I liked my team. I, I, my team liked me. But it was something where it was a new time to explore how to like design a team and design human <laughs> relationships and design how people grow in their career. And that was super cool to me. I thought I was very humbled. I'm very proud and um, thankful that I was able to have that opportunity to work mm -hmm. on creative designers, young creative designers, and try to get them to their goals. Um, at the same time, managing a department that needs to have these business objectives and work with the other business leads. And that was a whole new design problem that I never mm -hmm. experienced before. And I just tried everything. Like it was great because they understood what position I was at. They understood that I was learning and the company was evolving. So we're all going to learn together. And they let me try. They let me try different things out. And my team let me try to be a different leader one month and try a different like um, kind of course of action another month. And they were cool with it. So that felt really good that I had a supportive team and we, we both tried to honestly figure out what was best for the company and ourselves. Oh, I mean, from the outside, I could see how good of a leader you are just because from our day-to-day -day conversations you're like oh this is what i learn about you know you um, need to focus on the employee strengths and how to work with them as opposed to a lot of places i've been at where the boss wants something and they instead of working with their employee strengths they are forcing them to be something they're not right so i really admire the fact that you really focus and okay this person works better with xyz and this other person is like the complete opposite and then seeing you talk about it and try to figure out with compassion and not like stress it, it seems like it was something that you really really enjoyed and it you know it light you up to figure that out i guess <laughs> yeah totally it, it was without it not without its stresses but it, it absolutely coming from that point of view like you mentioned of figuring out what works best that, that that felt good to me that that made sense to me granted there are other uh, leaders who, who do well in, with different tactics that's what worked for me I always explain to people that I maybe got that experience when I used to be like a movie theater like, <laughs> trainer I trained like 400 high school students over my oh. course just over my course of yeah theater. 
And it's kind of like managing a, like a little league soccer team. You just have to, you meet so many personalities, you meet so many people with different desires and wants, and you just start to learn that it's easier to work alongside them rather than work against them. Um, yeah. And at the same time, th there, there were hard decisions. There are times where you had to choose what's best for the company, what's best for the team, what's best for each other. So you obviously have to make those hard decisions at certain times, but... Overall, it was, it was very exciting, and the company also supported extra learning and so forth to make me into a better manager. Um, mm -hmm. Just a very different problem that I don't typically handle as a creative before, where we used to solve client problems, but a lot of internal issues or think initiatives, it was just a whole different people management problem that right. was interesting to me. So now with your business, do you, are you hoping to grow it to more than just you or like, what do you do right now? Maybe that will help. <laughs> uh, I'm still asking myself. Um, so primarily what I do is I, I typically work with or partner with different strategists or different full on agencies. And I work as either a consultant or as a creative, um, not necessarily arm, but like a, a creative independent uh, person for that company. Um, I, I still kind of embrace the idea of jumping around. So I work for several companies across Canada, like between Vancouver and Toronto, um, mm -hmm. which is super fun because you can mess around with time zones and you can start your day at different times. Oh, yeah. So yeah, so the, I, that's what I'm currently doing right now. So I'm still, and I'm focusing on trying to explore different areas of design work that interest me. Um, my most recent project, I was making an educational course for this uh, kind of, this person wanted to start this music program. And before that, I was just doing ads, um, basic advertising, or I moved to product design. So it was, it's really fun to get into that rhythm of trying different things, which I always mm -hmm. love. Um, so that's what I do right now. Do I want to expand? I don't know. Um, I'm always at a point of trying to figure out where I'm at in terms of being introspective and trying to figure out what I enjoy. I don't know if I'm at the point where I'm ready to hire people or be a bit like be that person uh, mm -hmm. for myself. I think I have right now I'm trying to figure out what I enjoy doing first, what I really can commit to, because there's obviously a lot of pressure in making sure when you hire someone, you can you can support the life they also want to live. Right. And that was a pressure mm -hmm. that I, I felt when I had to work as a, as a lead at my previous company where they have their own lives, they have their own desires and it's tough to be an owner and try to say, Hey, um, I can help you get there too. Right. If, if you follow me. So before I get to that point, I, I still want to figure out what I want so I can be a better leader for someone else who wants to kind of follow what I, I think is cool. Right. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> not, not there yet. Maybe someday. Yeah, I mean, expanding also doesn't mean that it necessarily has to be hiring someone. You can always expand in different ways, right? And yeah. I like how you're always pivoting and trying and testing and having a very curious mindset because that's, and not being afraid to follow that. I think yeah. one of the biggest challenges we have is like, oh, you know, the nine to five job, this is security. This is, you know, you get benefits, you get, it's all around job security and what society says is good or yeah. bad. So seeing someone who's kind of, you know, kind of follow their heart <laughs> like after this i just want to try this out and see how it works and then it's like oh maybe work in vancouver for a couple months and maybe do my own yeah. thing and you know you've managed to create a life at your own terms like yeah. you know how even your clients were like you know sometimes he's in the woods which i i think that's what i'm gonna call you know <laughs> jonathan in the woods <laughs> because you know you kind of slowly molded the way of life that you need right now it might change in the future, but I mean, it seems to be working for you. Yeah. It, that, no, thank you for like putting in that kind of, in that kind of light. I am, I feel like I'm super lucky. Um, I know what I had to put in to do this stuff, just like what mm -hmm. you had to put in to start your own stuff and start your own company and what you have to continue to put in. So it does take a ton of work, but it doesn't mean you can't spend time enjoying it and not have to accelerate all the time. And I think that's where I'm currently at is just, I'm being very diligent and very focused on the initiatives that I am putting work into. I really do care about them and I want them to be out in the world and I, I'm willing to put all that energy into it. 
And I've slowly started finding these things that matter to me that I'm willing to put work into, and that feels good. Um, I, I'm fortunate enough that I, I thought of this lifestyle throughout my whole career. I knew that I wanted to always have that freedom. So it came from financial planning to connections to business management. Those were all small steps I did throughout my life that helped me get to this more stable point. And who knows? I might, I might flip it over again, but I think always Throw a wrench, having, like you said, <laughs> throwing your wrench into your life. I think always having that thing in the back of your head, in the back burner, it is important to feed every now and then because at some point those those ideas, those seeds are going to grow, and then that's when hard work, luck, and opportunity kind of come together. Yeah, yeah, I think that's so important that you know it doesn't happen overnight. And yeah. a lot of people expect like, oh, maybe I can do this and maybe try a couple of tricks and I'll get, I'll be successful. However that means, right? Yeah. Um, what does alignment mean for you? Um, I think alignment right now, what it means for me mm-hmm. is figuring out what balance looks like in my life. I'm... I'm very good at being an extreme person, like personality in some, in any kind of way. For example, I know when I, when I go back into a full-time job, I give it like 110, I give it everything. And I'm trying to figure out how to do, do that while still not burning out. Like we talked about before. Mm -hmm. Um, Likewise, when all these lockdowns happen and I had free time, I moved to another extreme of being really chilled out and maybe not being as productive as I could have been. So I feel like I have to get better at meeting in the middle um, and utilizing my skills and my energy efficiently where Mm -hmm. it's very easy to kind of like seesaw back and forth. So alignment to me is just understanding what that middle ground means for me Mm -hmm. and, you know, does it make me happy and can I sustain that middle ground? And I don't have to follow it completely. You know, you can wave here and there, but it's still nice to try to have this general direction that I want to feel like every day. Right, right. I love the fact that you said I'm figuring out what the middle is for me and see if I can sustain it. Because some mm-hmm. people think, hey, my ideal day would be waking up at the beach, blah, 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 doing this, and then maybe working, you know, the, was it four hour week, work week? That was like a big thing years ago. Yeah. And then, you know, you have this expectation, but sometimes once you get there, you don't, you don't allow yourself to do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. this is all you've ever wanted, but does it make you happy? <laughs> it sure. doesn't sustain you. So I think that's very, very important. Thank you for sharing. No worries. A, a lot of these things I've learned from the outdoors, if you ever paddle the canoe, it's mm-hmm. all about that. Like you'll always kind of drift left and right, but the goal is to generally know where you want to go and you'll, you'll get there. So it's kind of like life. You're, you're always just kind of going left and right, but the point is not to be over indexing on one side or another. Right. right. So, or you'll and, tip and over. Like, yeah, you tip over, right? So, that yeah, um, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know where I'm, I'm headed in a lot of ways. I know what I need to sustain this. I know what, what, my, what my nine to five is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm now curious of what else can it be, right? It's things don't have to always be the same, and that's the most fun thing about this career is that you, you have a lot of freedom that you never, you don't always realize you have. Mm-hmm. Um, that, and you have like these skills that might move you in every direction right so kind of comes back to my whole reason why i went to design in the first place i didn't want to stay in one job and i clearly am not doing that so. you got what you want stay curious I, yeah, I guess that's so. important for, yeah, for better or for worse that's what i got yeah oh what are your top five values and are you living them are you living by them every day sure um my top five values it's hard because like I, I know how they feel but finding words are sometimes tough um mm-hmm. i know like off the bat like equity matters to me and that can be applied to a lot of different situations um like efficiency i really do like being hyper efficient not in a not in a crazy way well, maybe it's a crazy way but just knowing that you're not wasting time or energy in one way or another, right? Think when you take a break or when you be lazy or lazy for a reason. So mm-hmm. you can still be efficient, just be very deliberate on what you're doing. Um, can you say mindful? Would it be mindful as well? 
Yeah, I guess so. It's just, it's being really aware and cognizant of what your actions mean and what you're doing with your time. Mm -hmm. um, loyalty is super important to me. It's probably the reason why I pushed myself in different careers and both like professionally, I, I really, when I work for a company, I, I do feel really loyal to them and I want the best for them because somebody built this and did a lot of work to get there. So it's important to me that I can be a part of that. Um, iteration, you, you, you know me, I'm always tweaking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for better or for worse, I'm always tweaking different things. And then I guess the last thing is just like adventure. It's an important value for me to just always explore physically and kind of just creatively that it it's a cool place to be when you have like the spirit of adventure. Like you just want to go out and try different things. And if it doesn't work out, you can always come back and that's okay. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Love them. Love them. <laughs> um, I, I feel like I still have so many questions, but one yeah. of the last one, what is the best compliment you have ever received? Oh, I know this one. <laughs> um, I was in Vancouver I was working for an ad agency and I was just there for a couple months. And this was at the end of my time at, uh, in, in the West Coast. And I worked for this really, really great creative director. This guy was, he had so much energy and like spunk and sass. And he, he had all these like this, this creative drive to just keep on pushing your ideas. So I, I, was, I always felt, so small compared to him. I always felt that he, so I'm giving you so much context, but it's getting somewhere. I always felt <laughs> no, that- it's great. <laughs> yeah, the story. <laughs> no, I always felt that he, he was so far. He, he, he knew so much and it would take me forever to get to that point. Um, and then at the end of my time there, I, I, I decided to leave the job to go back to Toronto. And I said to him, thank you. I said, thank you for showing like showing me how to how to look the way you look how to how to improve my work and so forth and then he said this one thing to me and this guy is kind of his personality is bigger than life he said to me this in the most sincere way saying i didn't do anything I, I didn't i didn't i didn't do anything i didn't teach you anything i didn't do any of that i just showed you what you saw the whole time like i showed you what you knew and it was inside you the whole time. And that to me meant so much to me. This person who I've only interacted with for several months, who I was so inspired by, told me that, hey, your goal, like the, the, your goal to be this great designer and be this great creative, you know what it looks like. It's in you. You just sometimes need help seeing it. And that meant so much to me that I had it, that he knew I had it, that he knew I had it when I'm, I interviewed, he knew I had it when I worked with him never made it he never made it look like he knew i had it he made me always like work really hard and make me feel bad about all my designs but it made me realize that he saw potential that i thought i needed an external person right. to to lead me to but he you know so that was a compliment to me that really had an impact and made me realize that hey i i, I have to look inside sounds super like after school special but it meant a lot to me so I have no idea what that means. Oh. <laughs> is this like a Canadian expression? No, it's just like, you know, like after school specials, they're, they're, they always end on wholesome notes. And like, oh, like, you know what? Yourself. But yeah. it's true because like even me listening to it, it, it's quite touching. It's almost as if, you know, that moment you were seen. Like, mm. yeah. Wow. Know, and having, yeah. yeah, having a leader, someone that you respect tell you, like dude yeah, you got it's it it's you yeah yeah, yeah. but not in, not in cheesy but really like honest way and it's just yeah. i don't know i feel just listening to your story like like angel singing or something like what yeah it, it it did feel like that he said it in way more eloquently and in less words but you could see how much like just a sentence he said meant to me yeah, yeah that's beautiful i i don't think anything can follow up to that. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing um is there anything you want to share is there anything i should have asked you about no i think you covered everything i think um 
in terms of just what I'm up to now, there's a lot of smaller projects that I'm working on that I'd love to share in the future. Um, but in terms of you asking me everything, I think you, you asked a lot of really good questions. Um, I, I was really happy with just talking to you. It's, it's always great talking to you. So I it's never. always great. Yeah. Now, where can people find you? Sure. So people can find me at agomadesign.com. That's my website. Um, I'm on socials. Um, it's agoma, A-G-O-M, and then six A's after it. <laughs> I will link it. I will link it in the podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's my last name if you're shouting, right? So, uh, uh, but yeah, that's where I'm at, and I'm beginning to post and do more in terms of sharing the work I'm interested in and the work that I think should be out in the world. So. Amazing. Okay, I wanted to try one more thing. I love affirmation cards, so I'm going to pull one for you. You okay. get to choose three different ones, like one of. You get to choose one of these three. This one is affirmations at work. Okay. Flipped. This one is affirmations on oh, love and relationship. <laughs> I've actually never opened this one. And then there is just overall 50 affirmation cards. I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> so this one is just kind of general. It's about kind of like a pick me up for forever. Oh, okay. Uh, you know what? No, I think I need the work one because I'm like- the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like it. So. Okay, so I'm going to shuffle it. Okay. I don't think I've ever done this. I mean, there's no way. I'm just figuring out a technique. And it's so usually, like, I love these because they're super inspiring, but I, I would love to design them one day in the future. But I just feel like it's a nice reminder or like a nice moment to kind of come back to yourself anyways okay. i don't know how this is going to work you can tell me when to stop shuffling and i'll grab the the card on the top with that okay how about this you, you put two cards in front of me and i'll, I'll point to them two cards okay two two cards. Cards. and then we can do oh wait wait oh they don't have they're not like decks of cards i don't know i don't know how this works uh i the this one okay. whatever whatever you see me pointing to sure sure oh, yeah. okay and then i'm gonna pick a card the from middle me. from this one Okay, whatever. <laughs> okay, tell me to stop. Tell me to stop. Clearly, I haven't figured out the logistics. It's getting very tell me stop. stop. Tell me when to stop. <laughs> All right, stop. Okay. You got process. Mm. I don't know if you can read it. I can read it for you, obviously. Yeah, I can. So Is it flipped? Nope, I can read it. Uh, no matter what I'm writing, designing, making, planning, or otherwise, out of... Sorry, it's a little blur. Out of... Thin air. Is that what I'm reading? I can read it. I can read it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <Jeff. laughs> I just wanted to show it to you. <laughs> Process. No matter what I'm writing, designing, making, planning, or otherwise out of thin air pulling, I surrender to the process. Part of the process. I realize that nothing is perfect at first, except maybe a baby otter. And I welcome the messy imperfections of my process with open arms. Messiness is proof that I trust myself. So let's ignore the dirty coffee cups and donut shrapnel on my desk, okay? I like that. Process. Yeah. Yeah, I like I'll that. take a photo so you can have it as well. Oh, thank you. That's super nice. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Trust yeah, I feel, process, like, I feel like that's fitting. <laughs> I'll figure out the logistics better for next time. <laughs> no, that worked. I loved it. That was exactly the way it should have been. So you should, you should recreate that scene by scene. <laughs> scene by scene. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, Jonathan. Yes. It's been absolutely. a real, real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me to ramble on. I like to talk. So I, I, it, it was an honor to be invited to this. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com slash podcasts for more information.